players already, so we can head over to the stage, Lou, as they get set up for this round one game. Yeah, let's take a closer look at our players getting ready in this amazing venue as well. It must be so nerve-wracking to be on that fantastic stage. But look, you've got Pikachu and Mewtwo hanging out with you as well, cheering you on for some support. And you can just, I think you can feel, even from here, that kind of adrenaline and focus that both of our players have got. This is round one. They're on stage. They're going to set the tone for this tournament. Well, are you ready for it, Pokemon trainers? We certainly are. Let's jump into game one here at the Pokemon World Championships. On Lowry's team, just to recap the Pokemon very quickly, we have got Porygon 2, Reshiram, Tapu Finny, Grimmsnarl, Regieleki, and Calyrex Ice Rider. And on Colin's side of the field, Thunderous, Zacian, Shininja, it's there. Grimmsnarl, Incineroar, and the Kyogre. But the leads coming out, it's going to be a Grimmsnarl apiece with a Regieleki and an Incineroar. Yeah, you've got the, it uh, looks like both players are kind of relying on that combination that we have talked about before mm -hmm. for those the, the teams that they're respectively bringing. Um, with the Incineroar on Colin's side of the field, he does have that active fake out on the Incineroar to disrupt the, the Regieleki that has went for mm -hmm. that. Protect here just to, to get around that or a potential parting shot that could come out. It is going to be that parting shot going straight down into the protecting Regieleki, and I like the light stream going up there as well in the face of the special attacker. It's good to be able to get that defensive measure in play as the Grim Snarl just goes for a um, spirit break there, dropping the special attack as well. Yeah, it's, um, it, it, it's a safe play here from Larry, you know, just getting that protect on to the, the Regieleki here. Doesn't mm -hmm. want to take any stat drops from potentially the Incineral or anything that if you both switched out here that was coming into the field or potential fake out, like we said. The light screen from Colin just setting up that protection there for the next five turns, depending on the item that the Grim Snarl is holding. Might have that light play, so it might be a little bit longer, but does give a little bit of protection to his side of the field to, mm -hmm. for that longevity of his team against the big threats like Regieleki that's now going for that Volt Switch. Yeah, Volt Switch connecting onto the Incineroar, going to allow Larry to kind of pivot Regieleki out, bring a Pokemon in from the back and reposition on the board. Colin, I think, going very strong here for the defensive plays. We've got a light screen out, we've got a re reflect up, possibly just anticipating something um, like the Calyrex Ice coming in from the back, so wanting to prepare for that later on. Parting shot's going to come out from the Incineroar as well, lots of repositioning. It's going to connect onto that Porygon too. It's not going to mind it too much. It genuinely plays a more supportive role, but it allows Colin to be able to switch that Incineroar out, maybe intimidate a little bit later on when something like the Calyrex is on the field and can bring in a Pokemon to apply some pressure to the Grim Snarl and Porygon too. Yeah, and depending on what Colin's got in the back, we are going to see Zash in mm. the field now for Colin. So he's got, obviously, the, 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 the Intrepid Sword ability will activate. It's going to get that attack boost now, making it a lot stronger and a, a lot more threatening to everything on Larry's side of the field. It is going to be able to throw out a big behemoth blade into the, the Grim Snarl there, but it does have to worry about potentially uh, Thunder Wave mm. from Larry's side of the field. If he has got that, um, and it is an option for him to potentially disrupt that side of the field, but it does come down to the options that Larry's got. Maybe no Thunder Wave because he is relying more on what looks like a mm -hmm. Trick Room mod in his team. Yeah, well, the Grim Snarl on Colin's side has taken two Spirit Breaks, just going to jump out of there and bring Incineroar back in. I think this is good to be able to apply that fake up pressure in the following turn, maybe allow the Zacian to be in a position where he can set up a substitute, particularly if Trick Room goes up. It's a good place for Zacian to be hiding behind the little substitute there. But Porygon 2 is also going to jump out of the way, and we're going to see Rush around, restricted out here on the field. That's something Zacian certainly does not want to see. No, definitely not, and it's a great switch in there for Larry to just put a bit more offensive pressure onto Colin's side of the field now that he has got that Zashin out, as we see a Reflect go up, which would mean you know, things on his side of the field will be able to take these attacks a lot better, these physical attacks. Yeah, we saw the Sacred Sword come out from Zacian here. I mean, Zacian's the Pokemon that has so many different move pool options, and we've seen a rise in some controversial choices lately, something like a quick attack. Um, but it's good to see that that Sacred Sword is on here, because that's going to be a good threat to something like that Porygon 2 that's so bulky and difficult to get rid of. Yeah, and the, we've seen three Pokemon from Colin's side of the field now. You've got to wonder, is the Kyogre in the back now? Because it is probably a good Pokemon to bring in against mm -hmm. that Reshiram. It's probably, if you can get a, maybe a parting shot off onto it from the Incineroar, you've got to be a bit wary about big... If it goes for the Dynamax this mm -hmm. turn, but maybe Larry wants to keep that Dynamax kind of until he gets a Trick Room up, potentially knowing the, the, the speed difference for things from his side of the field to Collins. Well, Reggie Lucky going to take the Behemoth Blade. They're obviously not very effective, so why switch in here for Lowry? As the Earth Power comes out from the rest around, it's not going to be enough to pick up the KO against that Incineroar. The Light Screen really paying off there for Colin, as Incineroar not only surviving the attack, but is able to drop the special attack of the opposing rest around as it dies out of the battlefield once again. Yeah, great play here from Colin. As you know, the screen's coming into great effect mm -hmm. to just make sure that you are able to take these big attacks. Rest room, a, a very strong special attacker, but with that light screen up now, making those 
damaging moves a bit less reduced and getting the parting shot off reducing the um the, the special attack and attack on that rusher and making it even less strong going into this next turn whilst also <laughs> getting that pivot out to the kyogre getting the rain onto the field it's not in the greatest position because you are threatened by that regieleki but the rusher i'm here not a threat as much as it was that previous turn to the mm -hmm. zash in now yeah, and I love the Kyogre here on the field. You mentioned it'd be good to get it in to threaten that rest round. And sometimes you have to worry about the Regieleki, but light screen is up. Kyogres tend to be relatively bulky anyway, and if you go for the Dynamax, you're going to double your HP stat, and you're going to be in a strong position to be able to withstand anything that Regieleki throws your way, and that's exactly what the Kyogre is doing. We talked about this a little bit previously. These Max guys are going to be hitting really, really hard, and Lowry doesn't seem to have any utility to be able to change the weather unless you want to max, um, you know, go for a Max Flare or something, but that could be then risking a KO on your Reshiram. But it's going to be a Dynamax piece, Lee. Yeah, both players going for the Dynamax this turn as we see Colin go for that. Kyogre Dynamax and oh, then Lowry the going for the, the Reshiram Dynamax, which is, you know, a, a big play here after taking that parting shot mm. and getting that reduced special attack damage. It's not going to be hitting as hard, but we'll see what attacks they go for. Regieleki just going for the Volt Switch. You can really see how little damage it is doing um, and it's revealing obviously that Life Orb on there as well. So it's trying really hard to deal some strong electric type damage. Could be indicative of the item on that Kyogre as well, something like an Assault Vest to boost up that special defense even further. Um, it's obviously allowing Lowry the utility to be able to switch in a Pokemon to the back and it's going to be that Grimmsnarl. Maybe getting Grimmsnarl in a position to be slightly less offensive with the Spirit Breaks and go for some screens to provide some defensive coverage. Grimmsnarl also able to take that Sacred Sword really well on the switch in as Kyogre goes for the Max Guy I think this is going into the rusher arm. Definitely into that rusher arm. Is it enough? Ooh. It's not quite enough to pick up the rusher arm there. A and a critical hit as well. So maybe kind of indicating an mm. item on that rusher arm, potentially an assault vest there, taking that attack in, surviving. Able to get off the max flare here, and that's the big thing. It will be able to change the weather here. And um, for, well, at least mm. this turn anyway, until the Kyogre decides to go for potentially <laughs> another max guys at the next turn, or max hail storm if it's got access to that, to change the weather in its favor. I mean, I think with the low HP stat of that rush around, another Max Geyser is going to be able to finish off even in the sun. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Grimmsnarl maybe going for something like a light screen here, just trying to boost up the special defense a little bit more on Lowry's side. Yeah, and you've got to think as well that there's Ash in on Colin's side of the field. is probably going to, well, it's going to be able to pick up the knockout onto the rush room on Lowry's side. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to worry potentially about a fake out from Lowry's Grimmsnarl. Has it got access to fake out? It is an option that we see sometimes on Grimmsnarl, not all the time, but you've got to be aware of that and you don't want to leave your Zashin in a, a, a compromised position. Yeah, so Zashin just diving on out of there, bringing in the Incineroar. Um, you know, it's got low HP, it might easily be KO'd at this point, but I think you're right, Lee, it's better than sacrificing your Zashin at this point. Grimmsnarl does indeed go for that light screen, boosting up the special defense on Lowry's side of the field in the face of this Kyogre that is going to go for a Nullamax Geyser. So this is going to override the weather, bring the rain back onto the field, and connect into that Reshiram. Not able to pick up the KO, though, however, I'm pretty sure that is an Assault Vest Reshiram then. It has to be an Assault Vest, yeah, taking that incredibly <laughs> well compared to that last turn as we do see another Max Flare come out, but into the Incineroar this time, and Incineroar, obviously with the rain, up, able to take that and stick around for this next turn, which is really important for Colin now. Going to have access to that fake out, all the party shot once again to reposition, potentially take down the rusher in this turn. He has got the speed advantage and get that Zashin back onto the field to help him kind of close things up. Yeah, well, we know the Grimmsnarl on Colin's side isn't running like clay um, because we've seen the kind of defensive measures drop now. So Colin is going to have to need to get those set up again if he wants that kind of defensive wall that he's been able to have so far in this match. But I think it's interesting looking at both these max moves being so underwhelming in their damage thanks to so many different conditions to do with raising up defensive measures or weather control as well. Reshiram's going to get out of there, doesn't want to use its last max move, and I think that's wise when it's not dealing so much damage. Um, and bringing in that Porygon too, maybe getting in a position to get Trick from rolling on Lowry's side. Max Guys is going to come out from the Kyogre though it is going to have the final say on the weather do minimal damage to the Porygon too but will set that rain so it's still going to be able to hit hard once Dynamax is over yeah getting the rain back up is so important because like you say when the Dynamax finishes you want your Kyogre in its preferable condition the rain on the field so it can actually start doing some mm -hmm. big damage now Lowry's decided to actually switch out the rest room save it for later and, and get the Porygon 2 onto the field now and you would think that you're probably going to try and get a trick room up I think if you can get the trick room up you're in a much better spot to get the rest room back onto the field as low health that is as it is you've got rid of those drops now that it took earlier and you're going to be able to still do some considerable damage to things like zashin that do threaten you pretty hard at the minute 
Crimson and Larry's side still going on the offensive with those spirit breaks. I think finally connects on a Pokemon that is going to suffer from it, you know? Being able to lower the special attack of the Kyogre, whereas previously it connected into physical, physical attackers, will be more beneficial to Larry here. And that Kyogre is now in a situation where it's had a special attack dropped, and it looks like Larry's in a, in a decent position to be able to try and go for a Trick Room. You have to worry about the Sacred Sword coming out, though, from something like the Zacian. Yeah, the, the double up here from the Kyogre and the Zacian is going to be, you know, It'll all come down to whether or not that Porygon can survive the attacks. Mm -hmm. And pretty much we are seeing the Reshiram come in just to take probably a Water Spout or an Orange Impulse from the Kyogre here. But the Porygon too, it all comes down to whether or not it can take this combination here. As we see Sacred Sword come out, doing big damage, but is the Water Spout enough? Oh, in the rain. It's enough to pick up the KO on that Reshiram, but not on the Porygon 2. It's going to be able to hang around and go for something like a Trick Room. But when you look at the Pokemon on Lowry's side, actually all four have been revealed. We know there's no Calyrex Ice in the back to come in and take utility of that Trick Room. So Porygon 2 just going for that recover. It looks like Lowry's going to try and keep the speed state how it is. Yeah, and in a way it makes sense when you are sacrificing the Reshiram was very low health mm -hmm. and you want to maybe rely a little bit more on something like your Regilek that he's bringing onto the field now which is going to be faster than everything else that can do some significant damage we've already seen that it is holding a light bulb so it will be hitting mm -hmm. a lot harder and with Holland screens ending now. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry in a position where he can really threaten even though the Kyogre we've seen how well it did take that Thunderbolt already yeah, that's the thing, Kyogre. A little bit of a precarious situation for it. It's going to have to take a Nullivolt switch. You can see how much more damage that is doing when the light screen is not in play. But once again, Larry able to reposition. Now gives him the opportunity to bring in the Grim Snarl from the back and possibly get those screens up or even threaten that Kyogre even more with another Spirit Break and just render it a little bit more useless for Colin here on the offensive side. Yeah, especially if Colin's locked into Water Spout. But I'm sure he's preparing for mm -hmm. an attack from the, the Regilek. We saw probably an Origin Pulse and if that comes out nice. Nice predict there as well to get mm -hmm. the Grimmsnarl on the switch in. You know, going for that safe attack into what was the Regilek. If it stays on the field and you don't get rid of the Zashin, you've taken it down. Um, if, it, if it switches out, then mm -hmm. the Grimmsnarl comes in. You know that's in the back, so pick that up. No problem at all. Yeah, foul play just going to come out, connect onto the Zashin, do a decent chunk of damage despite not being very effective. Um, but I think this is the interesting situation here for Colin. You now know that Lowry's down to just the two remaining Pokemon of Regieleki and the Porygon 2. If you can deal with the Regieleki that's on really minimal HP remaining, then Porygon 2 isn't too difficult to deal with. It's known as this kind of bulky, annoying Pokemon to get rid of. But when you see how many Pokemon Colin's got left, you can try and get the big damage on it, chip away at it. It's only got a limited amount of recovers. You're going to be able to deal with it eventually in the end game situation. You know, Porygon 2 can't do too much to the powerhouses that Colin has left. No, it is going to struggle, but, but I think here it, it, it's a hard decision. Do you go for the Zashin, try and remove it from the field? But it's it's an easy protect here from from Colin, whereas mm. you could go for that safe kind of bet, knowing the item on that Kyogre, the Assault Vest that can't protect. It's an easy slot to, to attack into, mm -hmm. but with your, you've got no options now to go for the Volt Switch to get it off the field, so you might be forced to kind of go after the Zashin here to um, try and remove it, but just playing for that safe protect. Yeah, Reggie Lecky protecting once again, as is Zacian on the opposing side of the field. So a few defensive plays coming out from our players as Porygon 2 goes for the foul play into that protect. And interesting now, Colin has got the Incineroar on the field. It can go for fake out here. Yeah, it's a great play from Colin to just adjust his board state mm -hmm. and get that Incineroar in. Like you say, with that fake out now, and with the Protect coming out from the Regieleki that last turn, it gives Colin the ability to Ooh. potentially remove it, but we do see the double Protect. I think Regieleki heard you, it gets the double Protect, so it's not going to take the damage from this Fake Out, you know, not allowing it to move. And Zacian was doubling up into it, so really Colin just ignoring that Porygon 2 that's going for another foul play, trying to get rid of this Regieleki as quickly as possible. Zacian is able to hang on though. Yeah, just about, and um, now the, the Porygon 2 putting in a lot of work, I think it's going to struggle if it's only attacking option. Mm -hmm. it's player to get the damage onto the Incineroar in particular. So like you said, it's going to be an uphill struggle for the Porygon 2 once that Regilecki goes down. But the Regilecki sticking around. Larry's playing it very well, you know, to get it this far into the match and whittling things down. So it's getting closer and closer in numbers now. Um, you know, Colin Pokemon are very low health at the moment. Yeah, all the Pokemon have dwindling HP. It's going to come down to speed. Cessation going for the Protect. And speaking of speed, Regilecki's going for that Electro Web, trying to lower the speed of Colin's Pokemon and also connect on both of them. You know, dealing that little bit of damage when they're so low HP could get you the KO, but not on Cessation, but it will on the Incineroar. Yeah, and that's a nice pick up there, getting that and as the Porygon 2 does recover. So you can see here that the, the, the problem that, that Colin has is he doesn't have anything that outspeeds the, the Regilecki. It is dwindling in, mm. in its HP, though, and it has got the Life Orb. 
orb, which if you can't knock it out, you know for a fact only a certain amount of <laughs> attacks it can take before it will knock itself out. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the Grim Snarl coming in here, it is going to be able to, you know, set up screens. And does it have some sort of speed control as well that it can, it can disrupt the Regieleki with? And Regieleki going for another Protect here, knowing that it, it doesn't want to go for those Life Orb recoils and dwindle away at itself. Um, Grim's not going for the Reflect. I think this is, you know, decent in this situation here. But the issue is this Porygon 2 going for Foul Play. It is at full HP. Well, not anymore, but still looking pretty good. And the Foul Play being able to connect down on that Posingization is going to be enough to pick up the KO against it. And I mean, don't blame me for saying it earlier, but I think I kind of ripped Porygon 2 off a little bit. It's now in a position where there's not a lot that... For example, the Grimmsnarl can do to it. If it can get another recover off, thanks to its natural bolt, it can be in a position where it can try and go toe to toe with this Kyogre. Yeah, potentially. And you know, the Regieleki definitely threatens the, the Kyogre, mm -hmm. really, really. With there's no protect there from the Kyogre, so we know the assault vest is on that. So it's an easy target here for Regieleki to go into that slot. And then all you have to do is, is worry about that Grimmsnarl. Porygon 2, on the other hand, does have access to recovery. We've seen recover already. And all you need to do is chip down a little bit onto that Porygon, uh, the Grimmsnarl, Ooh. a little bit at a time. But we do see Scary Face come out. And oh, oh and it connects. The Origin Pulse connecting and moving first thanks to that Scary Face speed drop. We'll be able to pick up the KO on both of these Pokemon. So Colin, with a cheeky critical hit for style points, able to claim game one. That is a huge turn there. The reveal right at the end as well of that match. Just to pull Ooh. out the, the, the scary face is a huge play. Um, but maybe there are better ways that Larry can approach this. And it'll be interesting to see how he goes into this next one. Yeah, I would personally love to see the Trick Room come out with that Calyrex Ice Rider. But it's hard when you've got Zacian and an Incineroar. But speaking of the Pokemon, we're into game two at home, guys. It is going to be for Colin, the Kyogre and the Grimmsnarl coming out. And the Regieleki and the Grimmsnarl on Larry's side. Yeah, so we are seeing Larry bring that Grim Snarl. Um, it makes sense as well. It gives him a little bit more support with the screens like Colin went for. But Colin going a bit more offensive this time here with the Kyogre straight off the bat, you mm -hmm. know. But he needs to get that that that. Up. It, we are seeing him go <laughs> for the Dynamax with the Kyogre here. Um, obviously with the Assault Vest, it is going to be able to take attacks from that Reggie Alecki a little bit better. But it's, yeah. I'm <laughs> Yeah, it's still going to take a lot of damage in the meantime, especially if we see there's some disruption from Larry's side of the field onto that Grimmsnarl. I always think it's really brave going for a Dynamax in front of a Regieleki. Um, but Grimmsnarl able to go with a fake out here into the opposing Grimmsnarl. So Colin's not going to be able to set up any screens and protect the Kyogre. It's going to have to take a Thunder. It wow. does not do quite 50% here, so that Assault Vest really paying off for the Kyogre. It's able to fire up a powerful Max Geyser in the rain into the opposing Grimmsnarl here, and we'll just remove it in a solid one-hit KO from the battlefield so no more spirit breaks does Colin have to worry about that's a huge turn there for Colin and a really smart choice because I think the one thing that you don't want is mm -hmm. screen support from your opponent getting the, the obvious target is the Reggie Alecki because yes. it's putting on so much pressure here obviously you weren't able to get your screen support up but now that fake out disruption has gone you're free if you are Colin to get a light screen support up so you know the next turn whatever Reggie Alecki mm -hmm. throws out you are going to be able to take that and you can potentially pick up a knockout in that position now. A rest room hitting the field, of course, can disrupt the weather, but we know it is slower than the Kyogre, so mm -hmm. we'll be going after it. This turn, if the Kyogre goes for one of those big max guys, as it is going to have the rain boosting those attacks behind it. Yeah, I wouldn't even be surprised to see Colin try and just target down that Regieleki, because like you said, Larry played it really well last game. You could go for that scary face and Max Geyser. You don't have to worry too much about the rest around at this point. You can maybe try and target it on the next turn. But Larry is going to go for the Dynamax on the rest around once again. So we've got both of these kind of weather setters facing off against each other, and it's always a scary situation for a rest around against a Water-type Pokemon. But Regieleki just going to go for the Protect. He doesn't want to leave the battlefield quite yet, pivot out with a Volt Switch or anything like that. As the light screen does get set up by the Grimmsnarl on Collar side, and I think this is key when you've got two special attackers against you, particularly one in its Dynamax form. Kyogre able to go for this Max Geyser, so you're going to be able to draw in the advantageous power of the rain, and even through the Protect, that does so much to that Regieleki. Yeah, a massive hit there through that Protect, and we do see the Max Flare come out from this Reshiram. It hasn't got the mm. special attack drop that it had in that first game, and now it has the Sun to kind of boost those fire attacks and mm -hmm. disrupt their water type attacks from the Kyogre here. And uh, the Regieleki still in a really <laughs> awkward position because it is going to potentially get knocked out this next turn, but it is going to outspeed. Has to worry about that scary face though that we saw from game one, so it can't be as free as it previously had been. 
Exactly. So I think bringing in the bulkier Porygon 2 is a nice switch here for Larry. As Grimmsnarl does indeed go for that scary face um, into um, what was the Reggie Alecki slot. So Porygon 2 able to take that. It's pretty slow anyway. It doesn't mind another drop. Followed up by this Max Geyser that was going into that slot. So Lowry really wanting to um, protect that Reggie Alecki, knowing that Colin was going to try and target it down. I mean, at the end of the day, this Kyogre can keep going for the Max Geysers and override the weather and deal with the Reshiram a little later on. It's actually switching things up, though. It's going to go for the Max Quake and boost up special defense on Lowry's side while trying to deal with the Grim Snarl, but to no avail. Yeah, it's a nice it's a nice option here for Lowry to go for that because I think you, you'll... Although you are disrupting the weather, the, the one thing is that the Kyogre's got. Mm -hmm. It can switch out and then just activate the weather once again with that drizzle ability that nothing on Larry's side of the field has, you know, an equivalent to. Yes. So you're better off making the most of your max moves. And it's great to see him go for that max quake here. And especially on that Porygon 2 and boost the special defense of those, these two Pokemon. You know, one has an Assault Vest, the Reshiram has the Assault Vest here. So it's going to increase its defense capabilities even more. And especially because you lost that Grim Snarl early mm -hmm. on in that first turn to the Kyogre on Colin's side. You know, you haven't got that line of support. But the Porygon 2 in a good position here, potentially now to set that Trick Room up and get that Reshiram in, in a nice mm -hmm. spot to try and get some damage back onto Colin's side and kind of try and even up the scores. Yeah, Grim Snarl once again playing defensively for Colin, setting up that Reflect on the battlefield, boosting up the physical defense. As Kyogre goes for an Origin Pulse, once again connects, but you can see it's not dealing too much with that Assault Vest on the rest round. There's going for another Max Quake, boosting up the special defense again to really kind of negate the offensive pressure of this Kyogre. It's now going to be at plus two special defense, and that's going to be a really hard wall stacked with that Assault Vest for Kyogre to kind of cut through the rest round with. Yeah, it just makes it even more difficult. And there we go. We <laughs> do see the Trick Room come out from Lowry's side of the field and twist the dimensions, mm -hmm. making everything on the, on the field that was the slowest, now the fastest for the next five turns. Yeah, and again, looking at Colin's HP stats, Kyogre and Grimmsnarl in that yellow zone there. And I think Reshiram now having that speed advantage over the Kyogre, it can go for, you know, some more Earth Powers and just try and chip away at it. You can deal with the Grimmsnarl much easier as well. So I'm not surprised to see Colin switch it out here. You want to kind of preserve that Kyogre when Trick Room's over, knowing you're going to regain that speed advantage. And I think Incineroar's a great Pokemon here. Unless it's something like the Earth Power coming its way, it's going to be able to take a multi of attacks from that rush around. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. I think the one thing you want to do now is try and slow the game down to stall out these trick room mm -hmm. turns if you're Colin. If you are Larry, though, you want to try and make the most of these turns and get as much damage onto Colin's side of the field and try and get some knockouts as soon as you're able to. Oh, and there's the blue flare in the rain. It's still able to pick up the KO against that Grimstone. Such a powerful move from the Rush Ram. And I love the animation as well. Always nice to showcase that on the broadcast. Um, but nice for Rush Ram to get the KO there. It's forcing Colin to have to switch a Pokemon in from the back. And it's going to be the Zash in here. And I think this is interesting because the rain is up, so that does give Zation a little bit more coverage. Uh, I believe the reflect is still up as well on Colin's side. Uh, maybe not the light screen, I'm not sure. I have to double check. I'm hoping the, the animations will be able to tell me. Um, and Reshiram can then apply a lot of pressure with something like an Earth Power, even out of the rain. Then you're not going to have your kind of fire power dwindled from the, you know, the fire type move. Yeah, that's it. I think you've got an active fake out of your Colin here to potentially stop the, the rush around this mm -hmm. turn if you want. Uh, it's the better option to do because you don't want to take an Earth Power from the rush around. You probably, if you had to choose between the two, you would take uh, a foul play out the two options. Of course, Colin can protect here, but it feels a little more useful to fake out and then get some damage onto the field and start pressuring and just slowing things down and chipping things away for when that trick room does reset. Mm -hmm. And like you say, Lou, you're in a much better position. I think the timing of when you get this incinerator off the field for Colin is key. If you can get through these trick room turns to try and get that Kyogre next to the Zash in when the trick room ends, mm -hmm. so you are in a position to try and, and clear the field. Now, I think the big thing here is to try and get some damage onto the Porygon too, so you can prevent the second trick room going yes. up, because that is going to be very difficult to kind of play around. Although you've still got to worry about that Reggie Alecki as well, so when the trick room does end, now the, the, the Grimmsnarl's gone on Colin's side, the, there's no scary face, so that <laughs> Reggie Alecki does become a bit more of a threat again for Larry. Yeah, I completely agree. If you're calling here, you have to think, what's the end game of Trick Room going to look like that I want it to be in, basically? And I think stalling out this Trick Room, going for that Protect organization is a really good play here. Porygon 2, once again, going for the foul play. We saw this do it in game one, just to try to whittle away at that Zation. It's going to be the Throat Drop from the Incineral, though. It's enough to pick up the KO against the Rishiram, so the Restricted is gone for Lowry here, as the rain is going to stop on the battlefield as well. But we know Kyogre's hiding in the back of Colin. It can reset that at any time. Yeah, and with one more turn of Trick Room left, you've got the Reggie Alecki coming in. So the, the, the big thing here, is I think it leaves the Porygon 2 a little bit open to take some big damage mm -hmm. where you can either you have to really protect
protect the Regieleki here because any attack coming out from the Incineroar opponent's side of the field, the Throw Chopper will be enough to take it out. And you know, the, the, the Porygon 2 is not going to be able to knock out the Zash in here, so you're going to be able to remove the Regieleki. He hasn't protected it, though, Lou, <laughs> as we see. Oh, it's not protected, and it's going to be the Flare Blitz coming into it from the Incineroar. Going to be enough to pick up the KO against it. Nice seeing the Incineroar catch that KO as well. Uh, the Incineroar also taking a little bit of recoil and station free to go for the Sacred Sword. It does so much to that Porygon 2. Of course, we know in Trick Room, Porygon 2 can just keep clicking that kind of recover button, but Trick Room has now ended. Yeah, and it's set Colin up perfectly here to just hit that Sacred Sword button mm -hmm. and close this game up and take set one for him, which we do see the forfeit come out. And Colin Haya is the victor in this first round. Yeah, amazing game to kind of kick off our broadcast with as well. And fantastic play. Congratulations to Colin and well done as well for Lowry. You know, it's only round one. There's still so much to play for. And it was lovely to see both these teams come up against each other. But I have to just talk about kind of the way Colin masterfully, you were kind of talking about it a little bit about the end game today, wanting that Zayshin and Incineroar next to each other as Chukum ended. And that's exactly what Colin was able to do.